Category 4 Hurricane Fiona continues to spin across the western Atlantic, where it goes and who is affected next in this video, as well as a massive storm that will be brewing in the Caribbean and into the Gulf of Mexico into next week, and fall-like temperatures finally arriving for the first day of fall here on your Thursday, September 22nd, across the northern and northeastern United States, breaking down your upcoming weather pattern in this video. Welcome back, everyone. First day of fall out there on your Thursday, September 22nd. Welcome back to Weather on the Go, all your weather coverage. If you guys are new to the channel and have yet to subscribe, hit the subscribe button down below and the notification bell to get all of my daily important weather forecast updates here on this channel. So looking currently again at Hurricane Fiona, this is a Category 4 hurricane across the open waters of the Western Atlantic. And you can definitely see we still got that eye wall continuing across the Western Atlantic with this system here. So it is still a pretty healthy hurricane. And as we kind of zoom out and show you the big picture, yeah, we can definitely see here the arms extending out from this hurricane on the northern side and the southern side. So it's still a pretty healthy hurricane. It is breathing across the Western Atlantic. And I continue to, you know, suggest that, yeah, this is going to continue to move northward and produce a lot of mayhem across portions of the Bahamas and into portions here of the uh, Bermuda area as we head into the next couple of days before it reaches portions of eastern Canada as we kind of move into, the, you know, this weekend and into early next week. So looking at the intensity guidance here with Hurricane Fiona, it remains at a Category 4, if not a strong Category 3 here the next couple of days, probably through the next 48 hours before it starts to slowly drop back to a Category 2, a Category 1, and then eventually back to a tropical storm. But that's not until this weekend into early next week until that occurs. So looking at the official track here from the National Hurricane Center, where Fiona looks to reside, is that it's going to be a major hurricane all the way through to the northwestern Atlantic, um, just off the coast there of eastern Canada, all the way through Friday evening, and still remaining at hurricane strength into eastern Canada as we get into Saturday evening. So we could definitely have a landfalling hurricane in eastern Canada, and then finally dropping back to a tropical storm, and then a post-tropical depression once it gets up into northeastern Canada towards Greenland. So definitely a very impressive system as this continues to move to the north. And looking at the guidance with this using the icon weather model very good short term weather model here for to kind of tracking some of these systems around a 940 millibar low expected here that later on this afternoon over the open waters of the western atlantic and just to the southwest of bermuda that will continue to quickly race its way on to the north here towards eastern canada as we head into tomorrow and even into saturday making landfall as a pretty strong hurricane still across portions there of eastern Canada on your Saturday morning, if not Saturday afternoon, as a 941 millibar low or thereabouts. So definitely bringing a lot of wind and a lot more rain across portions there of eastern Canada. So do be prepared up into places, um, you know, just to the east and northeast of Maine um, from the United States for a lot of damaging winds across those areas. We're also tracking another massive system that I think will develop across portions of the Caribbean over the next few days. Now, it's going to take a few a few days for this to start to develop but the national hurricane center maintains a 90 percent chance of 90 percent probability for this developing over much of the caribbean here within the next you know two to five days so looking at the caribbean and the gulf right now very quiet here some clouds out there but really not seeing too much we got some thunderstorms across the central americas a couple of thunderstorms here just to the north of south america but really nothing going on we just have fiona up here to the north of the greater antilles continuing to press to the north um, towards eastern Canada. But looking at this system here, that 90% probability, it's going to kind of develop as we head here into this weekend, especially late this weekend on your Sunday and going into next week is really when we're going to see this system deepen here to a hurricane and probably even a major hurricane. So I'll get to the you know model guidance on that here in just a moment. But looking at the ensemble tracks to where this could develop and kind of propagate towards is uh, still open you know to the any option right now. It could go west towards the Yucatan Peninsula. It could go right between the Yucatan Peninsula and western Cuba here into the open waters for most of its uh, residence time, or it could move over Cuba and into Florida and then kind of move over the waters again into the western Atlantic. So there's still a lot of options here, but if you look at this black line, this is kind of the average of where all these models are kind of steering this storm, and it looks 
to kind of reside over much of the Caribbean for a long period of time before moving over western Cuba and just to the west of Florida here and kind of hanging out very slowly potentially in the eastern Gulf of Mexico here on the ensemble track. And looking here at the water temperatures, again, we have the reds down here, the oranges. Those are water temperatures very favorable, very suitable for a pretty strong system, if not a major hurricane. Again, across these areas, water temperatures are in the 85 to near 90 degrees Fahrenheit uh, you know, environment at the surface. So definitely a lot of uh, intensity for the storm to kind of build on. And looking here over the, you know, looking at 98L uh, model intensity guidance here, uh, you can see a lot of open options of how strong the system System gets some of the models keep it as a tropical storm and category one hurricane a lot more of the models bringing it to a category two and three and even some of the other models kind of bringing it to an upper echelon type of hurricane up towards a category four if not a category five so there's still a lot of options with the track and the intensity here with this system so looking at the track now looking at the european forecast guidance for saturday afternoon and saturday evening the european forecast model has it as a 1006 millibar low across the central Caribbean as we head into Saturday evening time frame. By the time we get into early next week on your Monday, September 26th, the European forecast models actually move this just to the west there towards Cuba has a 985 millibar uh, low pressure, which would be a hurricane here at that point, and then really deepens it to a 954 millibar low into the middle of next week, going into your Wednesday morning and Wednesday afternoon time frame, just to the west or along the west coast of Florida. Now compare that to the GFS, it has it a little bit stronger across the Central Caribbean as a 1,002 millibar low on your Saturday, strengthens it and kind of moves it a little bit farther to the west here, not quite the Cuba, but a little farther to the west here towards the Yucatan Peninsula there and still over the open waters by Monday early next week as a 978 millibar low and then moves it over the Yucatan Peninsula here and kind of back over the central uh, Gulf of Mexico here as a 976 millibar low by the time we get to you know the midday hours into the afternoon on Wednesday next week and the GFS is a little bit farther to the west so there's still some disparity where the track of the system goes and also the intensity now at this time here we are still looking at a lot of details with this so we'll continue to kind of break this down over the next few days for you guys to kind of get more of an idea of a track and the intensity of this system but i am very very confident that a tropical storm and potentially even at least a category one hurricane is likely to unfold as we head into early next week Moving back across the mainland United States here and really uh, much of North America, we have a trough digging down across the Great Lakes here in southeastern Canada around the Ontario and Quebec area. We got more of kind of zonal Pacific flow across the western United States here. Um, pretty much a, a lull in the action here besides the east coast seeing maybe a marginal risk of severe weather later on today. The I-95 corridor from Boston to New York City through New Jersey all the way back down into North Carolina and the outer banks there in eastern Virginia. We also have a small marginal risk across southeastern Montana and northeastern Wyoming. Both of these areas combined have a small chance for some damaging winds, around a 5% chance here. So not all of you will see these storms that will be severe, but those who do could see gusts up to 60 miles per hour, maybe some quarter size hail. Um, looking at the hail threat though, is pretty much less than 5% and less than 2% for tornadoes. So mainly just the damaging wind threat we'll have to watch. But if you do see hail, it could be up to around quarter size and we're not really expecting any tornadoes so that is some good news but as we move into this weekend on your saturday september 24th we have more of that zonal flow continuing across much of the contiguous united states with kind of a broader trough across portions of central and eastern canada at that point and across the upper great lakes and much of the northeast and that will continue to kind of make its way into the eastern seaboard which will bring a lot of cooler temperatures as we head through the day today and as we get into this weekend kind of that broader trough bringing those cooler than normal temperatures across much of the northern and northeastern United States here with a ridge starting to build back across the western United States here where you see these orange shaded colors. That's where we have some of the return flow from Mexico, from the Pacific Ocean, and the western Gulf of Mexico as well, bringing some much warmer temperatures across places here like California, Utah, Nevada, and down into Arizona here as well, and really much of the west. And looking at your temperatures here this afternoon, yeah, fall-like air mass definitely right on 
time with fall equinox here today. We got upper 60s here across portions as far south, um, or actually as far north as the Missouri Valley. But look to the north, guys. Um, the Dakotas, Minnesota, Wisconsin, some of these areas will be tough to reach 60 degrees today. And then as we head into your Friday, much of the same, a lot more widespread 50s across Minnesota, the Twin Cities area, all the way down to Des Moines, Iowa perhaps as far south as northern Missouri, while we still have that ridge kind of being flattened down toward the Gulf Coast, with still some upper 90s down into portions of Texas and Oklahoma, portions of Louisiana as well. And then as we move into Saturday, we'll start to see a little bit more return flow here with that zonal Pacific flow starting to take over from west to east across the United States, starting to modify some of the air a little bit, while we still have that trough to the northeast across the upper Great Lakes and the northeast, still bringing some cooler temperatures with that northwest westerly flow underneath that trough with temperatures back into the 50s on your Saturday. So looking longer range here a little bit going toward the very end of September and then the first day of October from September 27th through October 1st, largely above normal across much of these areas west of the Mississippi River, across the Rockies, much of the Great Plains and back to the Pacific Northwest and California where we have that trough digging down across the eastern United States and more, you know, more likely across the northeast we'll have below normal temperatures during that time frame. But looking at precipitation underneath that warmer ridge where we have temperatures warming up. We're not going to have a lot of cloud cover. We're going to see lots of sunshine out there. So below normal precipitation is favored, especially across the upper Midwest and the middle Mississippi Valley here from Wisconsin to Illinois, Iowa, back into Missouri, but really extending back towards Texas as well. A small area of above normal precipitation is possible across the, uh, you know, the Four Corners region. That is possible. And But we are seeing a signal here across the southeast, particularly southern Florida, down toward the Miami area, Key West, and maybe up toward Tampa Bay and Orlando, Florida, where we could have a well above normal precipitation there as well. And that is because of that storm system I was just mentioning earlier on in the video as we move into next week. Speaking of next week, as we get into the next Monday into Tuesday time frame, we'll still have that broad trough digging down across the eastern United States, that ridge continuing to persist with all those warmer temperatures with that return flow across the western United States. We do also have a smaller trough digging down across the Aleutian Islands we'll have to watch in the next week. That could kind of pivot its way toward the Pacific Northwest, maybe bringing some rainfall to places like British Columbia, Canada, and maybe down toward Washington State. But other than that, this ridge will continue to dominate and actually press its way to the east a little bit further toward the Mississippi River as we get toward the middle and late portion of next week, which would actually close out the month of September. And looking through the next seven days for precipitation, again, we have some chances of precipitation earlier on here in the period uh, through the next few days across the desert southwest and up toward the you know northwestern Rockies and places like the Central Plains. But other than that, the only game in town would be that hurricane across the Gulf of Mexico bringing widespread heavy rainfall potentially to Florida and places there potentially along the east coast. Uh, but with that ridge persisting and kind of moving across the western and central states here as we head into next week, don't expect much in the way of rainfall. A lot of below normal precipitation will be favored during that time. Time frame. So thank you guys so much for watching. Definitely much appreciated here. Happy first day of fall to you guys as well. Remember to like the video down below by giving it a thumbs up. Leave any comments, questions, and concerns below. We'll get to those later on today. And most importantly, guys, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Definitely appreciate all the new subscribers out there. Keep hitting that subscribe button, everybody. If you like this video, definitely much appreciated. Also hit the notification bell to get all of my important weather forecast updates in the days, weeks, and months to come. Thank you guys for watching. Have a great Thursday out there and I'll see you all in the next video.